Hello, and welcome back to the weekly rundown from the Minnesota Daily. I am your host, Michael Line, one of our four sports reporters. Today, I am with two of the greatest gymnasts to ever go through the Gophers Women's Gymnastics Program. Together, the duo holds the top 14 best all-around scores in program history. The first gymnast here with me today has a long list of accolades and accomplishments during her five-year stint with the Gophers. She was the 2021 AAI Award winner, a three-time Big Ten Gymnast of the Year, a three-year Honda Award finalist, and the Big Ten Freshman of the Year in 2018. She is an eight-time NCAA First Team All-American and a four-time NCAA Second Team All-American. She has seven Big Ten Championships uh, titles to her name, which ties for the most in program history. She holds the program record in all-around competition, and she has earned five career perfect tens, four on beam and one on vault. She even has a gymnastic skill named after her. I could continue on with the accolades, but without further ado, Lexi Ramler is the first gymnast from the Gophers women's gymnastics team to join me today. Hi, Lexi. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. Thanks for being here. Should Thank be a fun podcast. <laughs> the second gymnast but certainly not the least here with me today, also has quite the gymnastics resume after her five collegiate years with the Gophers. She was a finalist for the AAI Award in 2022 and is a two-time NCAA First Team All-American and a three-time NCAA Second Team All-American. She has five career perfect tens on vault, the most in Gophers program history. She is a Big Ten champion on floor, And the only gymnast to have a higher all-around score than her in program history is sitting directly to her left in Lexi Ramler. The second gymnast that is joining Lexi and I today is Anna Loper. Hi, Anna. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having us. Of course. So just to get into it, to start, I'm just curious to learn about kind of how your guys' relationship developed over the past five years. Do you guys remember the first time you guys met? Yeah, I think it was on our official visit in, I think, September 2016, I think, when we both came to Minnesota. Um, Yeah, that was was so long ago. It's crazy. It was a long time ago, for sure. Yeah, I remember both of us were pretty quiet, um, and so we didn't have that initial connection right away, I think. It was more so, you know, we were just nice to each other and, and whatnot, um, and I think our bond really started to grow um, the first you know, summer that we were here um, in that aspect. So. What was kind of the first reactions that you had of each other? Personally, I was a little bit intimidated by Lexi. <laughs> Obviously, she was an elite athlete, um, just an incredible person all around um so just meeting her in person was kind of crazy and um I mean yeah it was (laughs) I was definitely intimidated (laughs) I didn't really know how to approach her (laughs) my first kind of like interaction with Anna like I really came to college so I was really quiet in high school um and so I wanted to come to college and kind of grow outside of my bubble a little bit so she was a little quiet so (laughs) I was like okay like she's super nice (laughs) um and then but like I wasn't like super super drawn to her I would say (laughs) it wasn't love at first sight it was not love at first sight (laughs) um but then again like during that summer when we were like actually together and like working out together and basically 24 7 together that's where our bond really grew the relationship wasn't big at that time but as it progressed throughout the years you guys have been roommates correct for how long in, well, freshman year we weren't, but after that, so the past four years. I was talking to Jenny this morning, and she said that you guys are very close. You mm-hmm. take s- studies very seriously, and you spend a lot of time together. Just what has that meant to you guys to have developed such a close relationship? You know, whereas you came in freshman year, you weren't roommates. Just how has that been? For me personally, it has meant so much. Um, I think really kind of having that training buddy every single day. We work very similar together. Um, We like our space, but we also really like each other at the same time. (laughs) Um, So there's so many different aspects about how we just really like draw that connection with each other. And it's just, it's so fun and so cool to experience all of these different opportunities 
um, with with your favorite person. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's definitely been nice just to have someone to always be able to go to with anything. Um, college can be really hard, and um, so having someone that can relate to all of your struggles is super nice. Um, she's been there through everything, and she's just really pushed me as a gymnast and made me be a better person overall. I've had the pleasure of watching you guys um, covering the team over the past two seasons. Um, how much has just like friendly competition helped you guys through practice and meets? Obviously, just watching you guys, you guys seem to be even pretty competitive with each other. I would say that really comes in like co like working out. Like for me personally, like conditioning. Like we have like this five back tuck routine. I'm like, hey, you want to race? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and so like that's where I'd say like we really push ourselves like in the gym um, and just in that competitive aspect. But I think when it comes to competition, we're we're so there for support. We want to see each other do so well, and ultimately that just you know brings up the team. Um, and it's. It's been hard, but to have that person that knows exactly what you're going through and is doing the same work and just going through everything the same, um, it just brings all that comfort. For sure. And when you guys are choosing a school five, six, seven years ago, why Minnesota? What brought you guys to Minnesota? What interested you about Minnesota's gymnastics program? I feel like this one might be easy for Lexi because she's from Minnesota. <laughs> um, but for me, I didn't really know a lot about the University of Minnesota before I did my first visit. It wasn't really something I was drawn to just because it was so far away from home. Um, and then the coaches contacted me, and I kind of just like started talking to them a little bit. And I really liked Jenny and just how um, her personality and just how she talked about the program, so I ended up coming to visit, and then I just immediately fell in love with everything, the campus, the people, um, and just, it was very different, and that was kind of like an environment that I wanted to experience, um, so I was excited to kind of get outside of my comfort zone and, and yeah, experience something new. So I was pretty much more on the opposite. I wanted to stay close to home. I wanted to stay in Minnesota close to my family and everything. Um, so that was ultimately my biggest decision there, but also like the academics here at the University of Minnesota is are just world class um, and so that definitely is what drew me there and then just kind of how the coaches also interacted with the athletes and through kind of practices um, and that's definitely what draw me drew me overall to this program. When I was talking to Jenny Anna she mentioned that the Minnesota gymnastics program was the first program to offer you is that true? Yes and the only. <laughs> Just, I know that. it was the only one. Yeah. <laughs> the only one that took a chance on you. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. <laughs> How does that make you feel sitting here five, six, seven years later? I'm, I'm just truly grateful for Minnesota for being the one to reach out to me. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted to experience my college gymnastics career anywhere else. So, honestly, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> when you guys got here, talking about influential people, when I say influential people, is there any that come to mind right away throughout your gymnastics career here? For me, kind of really coming in as a freshman, not really knowing and understanding college, um, my, col my club experience was very individual-based. Um, I didn't have a lot of athletes my age um, that I was working with or anything. And so when I came in, college is very much more of a team aspect. And so I had two seniors that really kind of guided me along in the way through just figuring out how college gymnastics works, figuring out the team aspect, and also figuring out how to lead um, a team in this kind of culture and environment. So those two seniors really made such an impact on me and really influenced me. Um, so I was Rachel Rowland and Hannah Hitchcock. So I still stay in contact with them today. <laughs> Uh, and they just were so much fun and made the experience just so memorable. Yeah, I definitely agree. I remember the seniors our freshman year were just incredible leaders, and every day in the gym I wanted to be just like them. And um, once I left, I really wanted to make sure that I was being a leader the way that they were because they, um, they were just so positive all the time, and they just knew how to um, get a team ready where they needed to be. Right, and what was it about the seniors? Was it just them helping you guys get settled in, get comfortable around the team? What was it specifically with those seniors that really helped you guys? 
I say for me, like, I wasn't, I didn't feel like a freshman. I felt like an individual that they were, like, reaching out to, that they were, you know, they were so inclusive and just, like, really concerned about, like, me as an individual and just how is life and, and just more of that personal aspect rather than just a team member. Um, and I think that really shows about, you know, how we're still in contact today. Yeah, I agree. And also, I think, especially with um, Hannah Hitchcock and Rachel Rowland, they didn't take anything too seriously. And I think for both Lexi and I, when we came in, we were very serious athletes. Um, so like, they kind of taught us how to have fun and really enjoy just like every day. Hannah would always just say like, it is just gymnastics, like just put that in perspective. Like, it's not the end of the world if you mess up. And I think just that's kind of helped every single year, like um, reduce the pressure a little bit in competitions and just allowed me to have a lot more fun. For sure. And moving into just all-time favorite moments, obviously you guys have been here for five years now, so there's got to be a lot of moments. But when you hear, like, all-time favorite moments, is there anything that comes to your mind right away? Because I'm sure there's plenty, but is there one that really sticks out to you guys? There's so many. <laughs> I was waiting to see if we were going to say the same one. <laughs> you, can even, you can even do, like, top three if you want. If, okay. if, if there's one that's too hard, you could do, like, your top three or whatever. Okay, well, my, like, all-time favorite memory, like, as, like, an individual, I would say is getting my first 10 at the PAV. Um, that just meant so much to me as well as just, like, the whole environment of just, like, how the fans just roared and, like, that, that just – that energy – um, that was such such a key moment that I just oh, I just remember that one so much. Um, another one I would say is Big Tens when we won. Um, I remember just watching Anna perform on floor, and it was just it was just so cool to just like sit back and watch her just do incredible. And then, like, afterwards, finishing that, that meet and just sitting there, we just won Big Tens, and <laughs> we were just sitting there, and we're like, wow, like, look at this. <laughs> like, like everybody else is kind of, like, going wild and going crazy, but Anna and I just kind of sat there. I mean, we were tired, but we were like, like, this is, this is what it's about, you know. It's, it's about working all of these years. Um, it wasn't just that meet. You know, it was all the practices that we went through and, and building this team and just creating all these connections, and that was just – Cool, cool experience for me. <laughs> you got one? <laughs> she, she took mine. <laughs> uh, yes, Big Tens was definitely one to remember. I, I remember trying to look at the score while I was doing my routine because I'm pretty sure I, because it was right before my second pass, I heard everyone like kind of making noises, but then they were like, shh, shh don't like, yeah. don't freak out too much because like they knew I was still going. And so I was like, oh, like we must have like won because. I think we were waiting for, like, Maya's score to go in. Um, but that was that was fun. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> definitely probably my first 10. Mm -hmm. um, it was at North Carolina State right before COVID, I think. That was our last meet. It was our yeah. last meet before COVID, which was crazy. Um, finally sticking a vault was, like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh. It's an incredible feeling. Um, and then finally getting that 10 and just, like, the team. Like, you just – it just like being bombarded by hugs like it's just such a fun like experience and just something that you, you can't really put into words Anna you mentioned at big tens like during your floor routine how everybody was freaking out and you looked up at the scoreboard how much scoreboard watching do you guys do during meets or was that more of like a unique situation where you just happened to look up at the scoreboard like I've I've always been curious to know like do gymnasts pay attention to that a lot or is it more you guys don't want to look at the scoreboard? Um, I guess it depends on where we're at, I think. I don't know. Like, with that one, I wasn't – I didn't actually – I wasn't able to see it. Like, I, it was too quick. I was like, shoot, no, focus. All people notice that I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing my routine right. Um, but, I mean, for the most part, I think as we've progressed throughout the years, we've really just tried to focus on staying in our own bubble and not really worrying about scores. You can't really control what the scores are um, on any given day. Like, so – we really, I, I try not to too much, I think, overall. Yeah, I'm the same way. I try not to look at it, but when, when you get down to, like, the last event, like, you just you just want to look. You want to know how close we are. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, especially when you're, like, comfortable and you're, like, pretty yeah. sure you got it, but. <laughs> I'd yeah. say, like, very specific to, like, regionals this year. 
like we were going into like the final day um, and we were going into that last event and we were, everybody was kind of like looking at it because it's the top two teams that go and qualify. And we were down a little bit, but we were ending on floor and we're like, this is our event, you know, just like hyping up the whole situation. But I think we were super confident going into that situation just because we were on floor. Like we've been really, you would just been like rocking that event and everything. But there's definitely times when you like, you definitely like look to check it out because you're like, you know, we're all competitive. We all want to know. <laughs> That makes sense. Like, I definitely would be scoreboard watching, <laughs> I feel like, if I was a gymnast. Moving on, do you guys have an all-time, like, favorite individual or team accomplishment? I'm sure your first perfect tens are up there and the big tens are up there. So maybe there's not anything else out there, but I'm curious to know because you guys have definitely earned some, um, a- like, accomplishments outside of outside of the gym, such as, like, um, big ten honors and national honors. So I'm just curious there's anything there I would say for me like just being able to go back to nationals again with this team um, I think the coolest part about being a part of this program through all my years is just the growth that it has ex- has experienced um, and it's just been so cool to watch to, to just to be a part of something that continues to grow um, is it's just a different connection, I would say, um, to kind of the whole experience. Yeah, I agree. I think going to nationals this year and last year was just, it made us feel like we were just like an incredible program and something that was really special to be a part of. And finishing t- in the top six this year is such a huge accomplishment for this program. So it's really it's really cool that we, we have been able to experience that. Yeah, and for people that don't know, the Gophers making NCAA appearances in the last two seasons and back-to-back is the first time in program history that that has happened, so that's super exciting. I'm curious to know about your guys' like, focus and mental preparation that goes into meets. Like, <laughs> if there's a meet at like 2 p.m., like, when do you wake up, and like, what's your routine like before you even get to the PAV, let's say? I can go. I feel like mine's changed every single year because I've tried to like do different strategies, and I think I think it's helped. I don't know though, um, but <laughs> I think I'm a little bit opposite than Lexi on this. But uh, I really just try not to think about anything. Pro- like focusing on school, like right before, is like ideal, just because like your head is totally not thinking about gym, um, <laughs> and yeah, just really trying to stay distracted, honestly. Um, and then usually, like, the day before practice is when I kind of have, like, a little freak out and, like, kind of stress and everything. So then, like, the day of the meet, I'm like, all right, I'll be fine. Like, no worries. Um, and that, that definitely happened a lot this year, which I think stressed a lot of people out. But <laughs> it gave me more confidence, so I was good with it. <laughs> yes, so we are completely opposites in this aspect. Um, <laughs> whenever she would, like like, just, like, struggle, like, the day before, like, everybody would kind of freak out. I'm like, ah, she's fine, guys. <laughs> like, I'm not concerned whatsoever. Warm up, so she's falling. I'm like, she's fine. <laughs> like, no, no big issue. Um, but I think that's just been throughout watching your confidence grow as just as well as you overall as an individual. For me, personally, I also have a little freak out, typically the night before. <laughs> That's just kind of how it goes. Um, But it's just, like, kind of at a point where I get so overwhelmed with everything. And it's not for every competition, (laughs) but, like, the bigger ones. Um, I just get so overwhelmed, and then it's just, like, okay, then I, like, calm down and settle down um, and really kind of, like, lock in. I'm definitely very focused on gymnastics, probably the night before all the way up to the meet. Um, I I don't do homework at those times. (laughs) Uh, Very much into just visualizing and just, you know, looking at my affirmations and kind of all those different aspects. So, Anna, you do homework to, like, kind of calm the nerves. And then you're more of, what do you do to calm your nerves? She's doing homework. What are you (laughs) off doing? (laughs) I'm just trying to stay distracted to not think about the me, honestly. (laughs) Yeah, for me, personally, it's just, like, listening to music or, like, just... Yeah, so something not homework. <laughs> <laughs> what What's your go-to music then for, like, meets or, like, before meets? 
for me, like kind of like getting ready, um, it's like country, like kind of like chill, like country music. Um, right before, then you gotta you know hype it up with a little <laughs> little more energy. Um, but I like really kind of need to conserve my energy. So like I like I'm not the type of person. You're not gonna see me like jumping around, getting crazy. <laughs> like I gotta save my energy a little bit um, until the very end. Then then I'll show my, my extra energy that I have. <laughs> Lexi, do you have a song that's, like, always on, like, right before meets? You said you increase the hype as it gets closer <laughs> to the meets. Is there one that's, like, always in the queue or, like, you play first? No, I don't really have, like, I have, like, I don't even know, like, the genre to try and, like, describe it. But it's just not country. <laughs> what about you, Anna? <laughs> What's on your playlist? I'm not a big music person before meets. I... I really actually don't listen to music at all before meets. Um, <laughs> Complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't like to get hyped up that much. Like I like to just like, you know, be chill. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I I can't say. So my roommate was Hannah for like meets away, and she's a big music person. So I was just like, you take the reins. You play whatever music you want. Doesn't matter to me. Um, so yeah, music doesn't really affect me in that way. I guess. Do you guys have any like? Go to meals the night before a meet or like the morning of a meet. I feel like usually Jenny kind of makes sure we do like pasta or something with like a lot of carbs before a meet. So like for away meets, that's usually what we do. Um, I feel like chicken parm is like probably one of our <laughs> go tos. <laughs> we always we, get like the exact. We same always meals. order the exact same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for home meets, not really. I just kind of do what you do every other day. Yeah, I would say, like, right before I go out, I do have, like, a half of a bagel with cream cheese. That is kind of, like, a thing that I've, like, had. But that's the only thing that's really repeated. Would you say that's, like, a superstition? You always have to get your half bagel with cheese? Um, no. I wouldn't say that. I do kind of, like, get upset if it's not there. <laughs> it wasn't It was there at Nationals, It right? was not there at Nationals. <laughs> Where's my cream cheese and bagel? <laughs> no. I was really flustered. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of flustered. But I, I was like, okay. It's more so of, like, I know I need to eat something because, like, I haven't ate, like, that entire morning. Like, I need to eat something. And, like, that's just, like, the only thing that I can really, like, put down. Even though, like, I don't really want it. Otherwise, it's just, like, an applesauce, I guess. But <laughs> do either of you have any superstitions with, like, warming up and – Getting ready for meets? I was really superstitious in high school, like, before I came to college. And then I, like, once I came to college, I was like, no. Like, some things you just can't control. Just, like, don't worry about it. Um, for a little bit, it was, like, the same earrings. I think, are you, Lexi, like me? Yeah, I, like, I wear the same earrings, but I I don't think, like, it would, like, change. Like, I, like, know that it doesn't affect my, like, performance. And I think that's, like, what both of us kind of, like, realize is that, with, like, kind of gymnastics or any sport, you – whatever's thrown at you, you have to deal with and figure it out um, and kind of be adaptable in, in those different aspects. So I think that's what we realize, but I do wear the exact same earrings for every single meet. <laughs> There's, like, little things where it's like, oh, like, maybe if I do this again, it will be good because last meet it was mm -hmm. good. But, like, you know that's not true. So I think it's, like, in the back of your head. But, like, you know you can still do well either way. Yeah, like, I did pour at one meet, and I've never done that hairstyle again. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> like, stuff like that, but <laughs> – what was the hairstyle? It was just like a simple braid in the front. <laughs> I was kind of upset because it was like, it looked good. <laughs> and then I was like, nope, can't do it again. So then I, like, I have a hairstyle that I do for every single meet. So um, I that was the one time that I switched it up. And then I was like, yep, see, that's what did it. But it's not in reality, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then moving on into the actual meets, um, depending on where the meet is, apparatuses, like, feel different. How does that – does that affect your routines a lot? Or what plays into that, just the feel of different apparatuses depending on where you're at? Yeah, I would say usually warm-ups can be a little chaotic depending on how the equipment is. Um, it is nice that we have those warm-ups so that we can kind of get a feel for it and kind of adapt to it. It usually takes a couple turns, especially, like, if the bars are different. Like, sometimes you have really bouncy bars, really chalky bars, like – or really bare bars without any chalk um, or like really stiff bars so usually bars is like where I find the most like difference in equipment um, and then just like if the floor is really hard then you just like have to be really tight so there's just like different like adjustments that you have to make depending on what the equipment is but I think we've been doing this for so long that we've kind of 
been able to figure that out a little bit. And you also like know like oh we're going back to Iowa. Remember what the equipment felt like, um, and like the team knows this, and so we're kind of like all right, hey, the, you know, go back to the chalk books. Like bars are really bouncy. Remember to do this and this and this. Um, and so again, it's something that we've had to experience. All athletes do, um, but it's something that doesn't stand in our way. Just with talking about going to different places, do you have a favorite destination for away meets that you guys have been over the years? I will say Utah was really fun this year. I was going to say Utah, yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted to compete in that arena ever since I was younger, so that was a really cool experience. Why? Was there just a lot of the, the energy there? Was there a lot of fans in, yes, in the arena? The what fan, made it? Yeah. Like, what sticks out <laughs> about Utah, I guess? Yes, the fans were incredible. They were just so much fun. And th- you can tell they just really appreciate gymnastics. So they were cheering for everyone no matter what. Um, and so that was really exciting. And then just the arena is just so big, and it just makes you feel like a superstar when you're down there because, yeah. like, everyone's just all eyes on you. Mm-hmm. For sure. And then with COVID, like – Obviously, it's you, you, you got to stay pretty safe, and I feel like your team did a pretty good job of that, if I'm not mistaken. What were you guys doing to kind of make sure that nothing serious would happen? I know you guys were pretty serious at meets about wearing masks. We all just kind of sat down and looked at what our goals were and said, if we want these goals to happen, then we're going to have to do everything we can. Um, and so I think that's really where, like, the whole team was able to like buy into that and just be like you know it's only for a couple months like we can do this like we're here for gymnastics and academics and so like let's achieve these goals and let's do this as a family and I think that really like united us in some ways because we were all in it together um and so I think in that aspect it we were able to get through it and it it wasn't too much of a challenge in that way. I've always been curious to ask athletes especially at the the college level, how you guys deal with uh, social media. Do you guys go on it a lot? Do you, like, look at it a lot? Like, how do you guys handle going about social media, especially for you two since you're, like, really, really good gymnasts? How do you guys just deal with that? Um, I can go. (laughs) I I actually deleted both my accounts this year just so that I could, you know, not, like, more just, like, enjoy it. Because, like, there are people that say things or, like, or you do kind of get caught up in, like, one thing someone says or, like, if you are doing good, you want to see, like, if people are not, you know, like, things like that. So it's just easier just to, like, not look at it at all. So um, I found a lot more peace just, like, not looking at anything. So it was really nice. <laughs> Again, opposites here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am definitely more into social media. I would say some of my, like, other teammates are even more into it. <laughs> I don't think I'm, like, that into it. Um, but I, I appreciate kind of the different outreach um, that I, you know, impacts that I can make on, you know, just reaching, like, younger athletes and just seeing, like, the cool stuff that they say. Um, ultimately, really focusing on the positive aspects, not focusing so much on the negative. Um, media can really kind of, like, drag you down in that way. Um, but I think that's over time is something that, that you learn. Um, but, yes, I'm definitely more into social media. <laughs> Obviously, you two being student athletes, do you guys have any cool relationships with other student athletes that may be on different teams? Obviously, Athletes Village is really big here now, and you probably see a lot of different teams and sharing like meals while you're eating lunch or dinner, whatever it may be. Do you guys have any cool relationships <laughs> there? Don't look at me. <laughs> I don't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very social person, so I think Lexi can take that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say, like, overall, as, like, a team, um, I think we're pretty close with, like, the hockey players as well as, like, the wrestlers. Um, and so it's just – it is fun to be, you know, know people who are a part of different teams, um, and you know individuals from other teams as well just through kind of seeing each other um, in different classes or if you're in the same college. Um, but it is it is fun just to be a part of that larger community. Um, you know, we're all grinding through, you know, athletics and academics. Um, and so it is it is fun to, to be a part of that. So I have a job also. So I've just been very busy. I don't really have a lot of time for other things. And when I do, um, it's not – my preference isn't socializing. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, mainly just school and work and then gym. But – I, I really try not to think about gym outside of, like, practice because 
uh, it's too much, but um, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> what do you do for your job? Um, I work at the Department of Health. So, what oh. exactly? <laughs> like, what exactly do you do at the Department of Health? I'm just curious. Um, so I work on pregnancy surveillance for COVID nineteen. So we just do a lot of like tracking. Um, so people who test positive for COVID during pregnancy, and then we look at like their birth outcomes, and I just do a lot of like data analysis and um, like medical record abstraction to determine like if there's any adverse birth outcomes and stuff. So I do a lot of like longitudinal follow up. Were you working still during the season, like when you when you were obviously practicing and <laughs> going to meets and such? Yeah, luckily it's been remote, so it's been really nice that I haven't had to go in because um, that, that would have been a little bit more difficult. Um, but usually about 20 to 25 hours, so it's really not that much. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, I've been doing it for over a year and a half, so I've like figured out how to like manage it fairly well. I can't believe you just said it's not that much. I feel like 20 to 25 hours on top of classes and, you know, being a student athlete is a lot. Yes, absolutely. It's a lot. I'm curious to just hear what's next for you guys. Is gymnastic? are you guys going to be involved in gymnastics in the future, whether that be continuing on actually being a gymnast or coaching? Kind of just what's next for you two? Um, for me, so I will still have one more semester of my master program. Um, so this summer I will be interning with Polaris, which I'm super excited about, and then going to be finishing my master's early. And But then, like, gymnastics is such a big part of my life. So <laughs> for me, like, personally, like, I just, like, love it so much, and being able to kind of coach young athletes is definitely something that I enjoy. So I'm going to find a way to stay in gymnastics somehow just through camps or doing floor routines um, and just different outreaches in that way. So I will be graduating with my master's in epidemiology in the next week or so. Um, Congrats. So, thank you. So my plans are kind of just to pursue my epidemiology career. Um, I'm still not quite sure where th it will lead me yet, but I wouldn't mind staying in gymnastics. <laughs> not quite to the extent that I think Lexi wants to, but um, also come back and watch meets, you know, <laughs> and cheer on the gophers. Um, they'll always be a family to me now so um, I always want to check in and make sure they're doing well and if they need anything and just being a supportive alumni now so I'm excited for that um, but yeah I I'm gonna be working at the department until September so well, I have at least a couple more months to figure out what I'm doing <laughs> congratulations to you guys both um, with exercise routines now after gymnastics are you guys going to have an exercise routine? Because obviously gymnastics, I feel like you guys are like constantly in the gym practicing. What's the exercise routine going to look for you guys now that, you know, you're not going to be in the gym all the time practicing your routines? I feel like right now we're on a little bit of a vacation. Like we're like, you know, we deserve this right now. Like let's just focus on school, get it done, like whatnot. Um, for me, I've always worked out to like make that last pass of my floor routine so like it's always been like gymnastics <laughs> motivated so I know I'm going to need to work out I told myself I'm gonna go work out tomorrow um but we'll see <laughs> we'll see what actually happens <laughs> yeah I definitely agree I think working out has definitely been gymnastics motivated only um especially like during the pandemic <laughs> it was like we had like a gap of like I think four months where we like weren't able to come back to Minnesota um or like really train in the gym just because everything was closed so it was just, like, only working out solely so that when we did come back, we would be able to do, like, gymnastics again and not, like, break. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see, like, what types of workouts we can do. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun to try to navigate that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think that will be a fun navigation for you guys to have to go through. And then on top of that, what about nutrition? Obviously, gymnasts have pretty... I'd imagine you guys are on pretty nutritious, like, cycles just throughout your gymnastics careers. Is that going to change for you guys, or do you feel like you're going to stick to a pretty nutrici or nutritious diet? So I would say that I think, 
I don't know if other people feel this way, but, like, as gymnasts, especially in college, like, since we are burning so many calories, like, every day when we're training, like, it is a lot easier just to, like, not feel guilty about, like, eating something bad. I don't know. So, I feel like now, I think, like, that will be, like, where it's, like, shoot, I'm not burning this, like, tomorrow. So, like, we should probably not eat it. <laughs> um, so, in that sense, I think it will be a little bit different. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we both know pretty well, like, you know, how to eat and what's good for us, like, what's going to make us feel good. Um me personally, I love my ice cream. <laughs> like I always like have like a bowl of ice cream or something like that. So I think I'll probably have to, you know, cut that, you know, or make some. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I overall, like I think, like we know how to eat good. Um, we know how to feel our bodies correctly. Um, it's just kind of those extra extra treats. <laughs> <laughs> What's your go-to ice cream? Do you have a brand? <sighs> I mean Ben and Jerry's. You can't you can't go wrong with that. I found this. I love half baked, and then I found um, peanut butter half baked, and oh, <laughs> it's it's. Is that new? I feel like I've never heard new. of that. It is new, and that's the issue. And then like you have to go hunting to find it. Like it's, they don't sell it everywhere, and like the you know the portions are just like a one serving, even though it says there are more than one. I think they're one serving, but they're really good. Does that it. make it addicting that it's like one <laughs> serving and then you just want more? Okay, so here's another difference between um, Anna and I. So she can go into the freezer and take, like, one scoop of ice cream, like, one little, like, one scoop, one little bite, and then put it back, not me. <laughs> if I take it out, like, I'll take, you know, like, half of the container, and then I'll, like, go eat that. I'm like, oh, I just, like, want a little bit more. And then it's like, well, I might as well just finish it now. So, like, she, we're just very different. <laughs> she has a lot more self-control. <laughs> Is okay, you know, I just like that? I like to be able to be like, oh, like if it's there, I might I like want a little bite, but I don't want to like eat it all and then it be gone. <laughs> but it's so good. And yes, so yes, she has more self control only when it comes to ice cream. Yeah, how do you <laughs> only ice cream? <laughs> how do you only take one bite? That's like, don't I'm you saying. want more? Like, are you're just satisfied with one bite? Usually, yeah. I feel like ice cream can be so like rich and overwhelming that. Yeah, but it draws like, you in. It's like no, another it, one. You want another I don't, one. I, I don't want to get a stomach ache from it. <laughs> don't get a stomach ache. <laughs> I'm not conditioned enough for it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Just two best friends that are complete opposites in a lot of fashions I'm learning. Yes. For you guys, <laughs> what are some of like the biggest lessons you guys have learned throughout the past five years? just from gymnastics? I would say a huge lesson that I've learned, not only from gymnastics, but is you know, also from Anna, is just being able to be independent and figure stuff out. Um, I, it's just, I remember like coming in like freshman year and like there'd be like something and Anna would just be like, oh, this is just how you figure it out. Like, I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'm like, what? Don't you just like call your mom or something? Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so I think just being around her and just, like, having that mindset as well as gymnastics just ultimately me, forcing you to, to be adaptable and, and figure stuff out as it goes, you know, look at the details. Um, there's so many different lessons that gymnastics as well as sports teach you, um, but that's definitely one that has developed in me. Yeah, there's a lot of lessons that I've learned. Um, <laughs> I think just – being true to yourself always is probably the number one. I think in college you can kind of get lost in just everything and try to be someone that you or other people want you to be or that you think you're expected to be, but it truly really just comes down to, like, making sure that you're doing what's best for you and um, just focusing on, like, how you can be the best version of yourself. So I think throughout the along the way um, every year I've just tried to be more focused on just, like, who I am and not really worrying too much about other things and I think that's been really eye-opening and just made this whole, whole experience just a lot more fun I guess mm -hmm. yeah when you guys first arrived here did you think that the impact you'd have on the program would be this big now that you're sitting here five six years later I definitely didn't, especially because, as we mentioned earlier, Minnesota was <laughs> my only option. Not in, a, in the best way possible. 
<laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Um, but no, I, I was just, I just wanted to do gymnastics and I didn't really realize everything that else that went into being a part of a program and a team, but I'm truly grateful for being able to have experienced the past five years here and just have helped the program do as well as it has. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Um, I think we both came in and just, you know, wanted to be a part of that lineup, being able to, you know, I think that's how, when I came in, that's how I thought I could only make a difference, was about being in lineup. Um, and I think a part of our seniors, as well as just being a part of the team, has really showed that every single person on the team is so crucial and so critical of, you know, it's just supporting people and, and just... There's so much that goes into a team. It's not just the people who are in lineup that are making the differences. Um, I don't think, personally, I don't even understand how much of an impact we have been able to make. Um, I know that we've been a part of something really cool and really great, but I think it's going to take a while to really understand the amount of like impact that we've actually been able to make on this team and this program. Um, but it's been something that I think both of us are super grateful to be a part of. Um, and just have enjoyed every single bit. Right, and you guys have been a part of a lot of things that have been really special. I don't know if you guys are aware, but the top four best team scores in program history all happened this season. Just how special is that for you guys being fifth years and helping the team accomplish that? I mean, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so cool, and I think that's really just, like, speaks to how much the team can continue to grow. Um, just from the confidence that we had from last year, bringing that right into this year. And it just, it shows. Um, and it was just so much fun to be a part of. And then also the program got its first 198. I mean, that's got to be super exciting. Mm -hmm. The floor team was just awesome for you guys this year. Um, and along with that, the top five best floor scores in program history happened this year. Just how fun was it to be a part of that floor team this year? Obviously, Maya anchoring, mm -hmm. she has a really special routine. But, I mean, that floor team was awesome for you guys, and you guys played a big role in it. I think it was super fun, too, because we came in, like, kind of throughout our beginning years, and floor was not our strong event. Um, and so I think it really – Honestly, it caught me off guard a little bit of how strong it was this year. But I think that's also what brought so much confidence to our team. When we got to that event, it was a party. We were having fun, and we could just go out there and perform. Um, it wasn't so, you know, focused and so tense that, you know, we needed to do really well on this event. It was just, just about having fun and performing for your teammates. Yeah, I agree. Like Lexi said, our freshman, sophomore years, we d our floor depth wasn't that strong and I mean, this year we had so many people on floor that we could have put in that would have scored just as well. So it just goes to show how our program's been growing. And, yeah, it was really fun to do just, like, floor every single weekend because that was just where we shined and we just had so much fun and, like, all the pressure was gone. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you guys want to talk about that you think I missed? I guess I'll just say that We'll really miss being Gophers, mm -hmm. and of course we'll still be alumni, but um, we've had an incredible five years here, and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Do you have any messages for Gophers fans out there? Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for everything. Yes, thank you so much for the support in, in the PAV, outside of the PAV, from a distance, over social media, everything. Um, I think our entire team has really felt it, and it's, it's just meant so much to us. We truly have the best fans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I want to thank Anna Loper and Lexi Ramler for sitting down with me and talking all things Gophers Gymnastics. Be sure to check out our website, mndaily.com, for more coverage, and tune in again at a later date to get the weekly rundown on all things Gophers sports. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate it. This was fun. Thank you so much. Thank you.